Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ben. Here I dive into the lesser known sites of China. Today I'm excited to share my amazing travel stories from my trip to Jianshui County, Yunnan Province. Let's get started. Jianshui is a historic county located in Yunnan Province, which is in the south part of China. Jianshui has a rich history that dates back over 1,200 years. It was an important cultural and political center during the Tang and Song dynasties. The county is renowned for its well-preserved ancient architecture. The first stop I visited was Shuanglong Bridge, translated to Double Dragon Bridge, which refers to the two rivers it spans. The bridge was initially constructed during the Qing Dynasty in the late 18th century. Originally built with three arches, it was later expanded to its current 17 arch structure in the mid 19th century. Shuanglong Bridge is renowned for its impressive stone construction. The bridge is 148 meters long and 3 meters wide, making it one of the largest multi-arch stone bridges in China. In ancient times, China's primary building materials were stone, wood, and bricks. The design of arch bridges maximized the use of these materials, especially stone. Arch bridges built with stone blocks forming arches saved materials while ensuring the bridge's strength and durability. Standing on the ancient arch bridges and gazing into the distance, I could feel the weight of history beneath my feet. The timeless design and sturdy construction spoke volumes about the ingenuity of the past. My second stop was Beigong village, a ethnic village deep in the mountains, located 30 kilometers northeast of Jianshui County. The village preserves many traditional buildings. Interestingly, everyone in the village shares the surname Kong and is believed to be a descendant of Confucius, the great ancient Chinese philosopher. The village paths are paved with sturdy bluestone slabs, making walking a bit challenging. A century or two ago, there were no bricks, so houses were built using earth. Some of these houses have fallen into disrepair while others remain well preserved. The stone steps leading up the mountain are still solid, though the houses on the hillside are now uninhabited. Walking through the village, I felt the weight of the history underfoot and marveled at the resilience of these old structures. My third stop is Xuezheng Examinational Hall in Jianshui. It is a historical site that serves as an examination center during the Qing Dynasty, located in the heart of Jianshui County. This site was used for the imperial examination system, which was a key method for selecting government officials based on merit rather than birthright. The examination hall faces south with a width of over 40 meters and a depth of 150 meters, covering an area of 6,000 square meters. The buildings are neatly arranged in 
systematic growth with over a hundred rooms in total. This is a sculpture depicting the scene of a student preparing for his exam at that time. This is the gate to one of the courtyards. The plaque above reads "Dragon Gate," referring to the Chinese saying "Carp leaping over the Dragon Gate," which symbolizes changing one's destiny through knowledge. As I enter the courtyard, the ground is still paved with blue stone slabs. Each courtyard has a large gate, adorned with different plaques and couplets. In front of each gate, various decorations can be found, such as flower pots with pine trees and intricately carved stone water tanks. These are the ink stones that students use at that time. Ink stones are typically carved from stone and come in various designs. These are the exam papers of the candidates. The imperial exam system typically tested candidates on eight-leg essays, classical studies, policy questions, and poetry. These sculptures depict the scene of the exam. Two proctors stand at the front, overseeing the examinees below. Some candidates are diligently writing; others are deep in thought, and a few appear to be dozing off. Standing inside the room, pushing open the window reveals a broad and expansive view. Red cloth strips with blessing for academic success hang in the courtyard, placed there by visiting students. I believe such decorations did not exist in ancient times. The success rate for passing the imperial examination during the Qing Dynasty was extremely low. Typically, less than one percent of the candidates managed to pass. The exam system had several levels, including the county, provincial, and national levels. To reach the highest level, known as the Jing Shi, candidates had to pass multiple rounds of rigorous testing. This scene depicts the successful candidates of the examination. In ancient times, officials typically traveled in sedan chairs like this.